everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. In the previous segment, um, we've been talking to um, Dr. Joseph Cardello about his book, The 12 Rules of Attention, How to Avoid Screw-Ups, Free Up Headspace, Do More, and be more at work. And in the previous segment, we were talking about a situation that probably a lot of us have been in. Either we lead a group or we're part of a group and we're doing a project and in comes this, and we all have different ways and dynamics that we engage when we're in a group. Um, some of which are helpful, some of which are not. We may go into dread, we may go into overdrive, we may go into, um, who knows what we go into. <laughs> In my example, I was talking about how I get into dread overdrive and just go into this like automatic autopilot zombie like place. Um, so having heard that example, um, <laughs> you, one of the ideas that you mentioned in your book is talking to your brain. So what would be the ways I could talk to my brain to either prevent this from happening or make <laughs> <laughs> ideally in the future? Well, one thing I can tell you not to do, <laughs> don't, don't think that, you know, I can assure everybody that if we tell ourselves, pay attention next time, probably we're not going to do it, right. <laughs> you know? So, you know, if, if you've done that, if you've said, okay, look, uh, you know, this is the hundredth time that, <laughs> that, that, that thus and thus has happened, you know, yes, I told you've been my, in my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told myself to go to that business meeting and listen more than I talk. And there I was, <laughs> you know, pontificate, you know, so most of us, most of us have, have experienced something like that. And the reason again, that we do that is because our, our mind is actually trying to help us. And it's trying to go to the last similar experience that we had and, and call up the coordinates of our behavior, the literal coordinates of our behavior, trigger those coordinates and it, and it, and it thinks it's done its job to help us. But you know, it, just telling ourselves don't do it again um, or to do something. It doesn't have to be something negative. We might just say, well, listen, this time when I go to the office meeting, I'm going to pay more attention. Um, but, you know, chances are you're not going to. Uh, so, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that we can do is, you know, to use some of the tools from our last discussion is to, is to make ourselves pre-aware or to make our to, to create what I call a preset. And what a preset is, is the, the actual establishment of the coordinates up here that our attention is going to fetch for us. Okay. And, and so, <clears throat> you know, we have some very old, old tools. Um, and they're old, and we still use them um, because they're great and because they work. And so one of the tools, one of the tools is awareness, but I'm trying to use awareness in, in a sense of, I want to preset the coordinates that trigger the behaviors, whatever right. they are. Just like the um, signs that you're saying in the hairpin turns, you're going to be doing right. that signs. Yeah, that's right. And by the way, in, in terms of our behavior, because you're kind of talking about this in your experience, you know, when we think of our behavior, it's not just the actions. Um, but also the thoughts that we have while we're having those actions. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm using as my example here, the business meeting, um, you know, what are the, what thoughts am I having during that business meeting? Those things are also triggered um, by past experiences and our moods and our organization within that experience or how we organize, um, you know, our attention will, will affect our creativity our attention will affect our ability to problem solve. Our attention will affect our memory within that situation. It'll shut off certain things like it did last time <laughs> or the time before that. Um, you know, like, for example, you know, who hasn't, who hasn't, uh, you know, with, you know, who, whose partner hasn't told them at least once in their life, listen, please don't do that again. <laughs> You know, and then the next thing you know, you're doing it again, and you're sitting there going, "How could I do this again?" Uh -huh. I told, I told myself not to do it again. But telling yourself, obviously, we all have experienced this, just 
doesn't work or you know who hasn't <laughs> who hasn't put there who, who hasn't had something important a piece of important paperwork or a uh, a health document or a, 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 some kind of financial receipt. So I'm going to put this somewhere different this time. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it somewhere safe. Yes. And, and then, and then we lose it. We can't remember where we put it. And then we tell ourselves, well, so much for putting it someplace safe. I should have put it in the usual place where my attention system, well, we don't say that, but, but what's yeah. happening is our attention system would locate it. So we put it in a different place. Our attention system's having a hard time locating it because mm. it's going to all the usual places. We tell ourselves not to do it again, and then we do. We, okay. we do the same thing again. We put our car keys somewhere different. We, so, so we all do this kind of thing. Um, and it affects our ability ultimately to achieve the goals that we want for our person. So it, it doesn't matter if it's a work goal or just a, you know, a, a goal in, in, in how I want to be as a, as a mm -hmm. person. Uh, so, so I think that, you know, one of the things that we can do, the, the tools that I was talking about are first to make ourselves aware mm -hmm. of there's an important situation coming up and I want to try to regulate it a little bit <laughs> okay um either because i've it's caused me a a hassle before or um just because i want to do something better or because uh you know uh, i want to explore other avenues of trying to achieve the same goal so one of the ways that we can do this is to is to use reflection mm -hmm. and reflection is kind of like playing a mental movie of an experience that we just had or have had in the past. And so, although it's very difficult to say to somebody, listen, you can fix, you can fix this behavior that you're trying to change right in the middle of it. That's really hard because mm -hmm. <clears throat> decisions are being made so far under our radar that, 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 that we don't even know it's happening. So it's, it's, it's you know, I think that I'd, I'd be steering, steering you wrong if I said you can really do that easily. It's not easy to do. Um, but if you create a preset, a pre-awareness of the situation by visualizing the situation in advance, um, by playing it in your head like a, like a mental movie and seeing yourself kind of in the third person behaving in that situation uh, and then trying to edit the behavior in that situation, the thoughts in that situation, the feelings in that situation, so that all those things start to line up with your purpose in the situation with the goal that you have in mind. And so if you reflect like this, you can almost like a writer creating a character and how that character is going to respond in a situation. You can create your own persona mm. and how you want to respond in that particular situation. Um, and then continue to edit it until the situation comes up in real time. So reflection gives you the ability to go over a past situation, spot any behavior that you want to change, you know, and it doesn't have to be faulty behavior. You could see a behavior that worked in a previous situation because that's where your mind's going to go uh, when you're in it again. You can, you can see the behavior that worked and, and, and also in your reflection, be able to say to yourself, the situation that I have coming up is slightly different. It's kind of like that, but it's slightly different. So I do require a little bit of editing. Mm -hmm. And you can start to make those edits within the reflection. Um, and you can spot again what worked, what didn't work, and all that. And, and I encourage everybody to, to go through the whole list, not just uh, the, the, the obvious behaviors, you know, uh, like if I'm trying to get a contract signed that I get the contract, not just right. that, right. not just that, but your energy within the situation, you know, try to put yourself back into yourself. And how did I feel in that situation? How was my energy? Was it, was it too jumpy? Was it, 
Was it too slight? Uh, was it imbalanced because of that? Um, was it pretty good? Why was it pretty good? Uh, what did I do that made it pretty good? Mm. You know, oftentimes mm. we don't ask that question when we do something, uh, you know, especially when we do something extraordinarily right. We don't, we just take the goods and run a lot of times. I do, <laughs> you know, but, but, but we should ask, what did I do differently that made this work mm. differently? To try to bring that into our awareness and to try to set up coordinates for the next time that we're in a situation like this so that we can really start to get at the top of our game. Yeah. Um, and, and I encourage people to consider things like, the way their memory worked within the situation, the thoughts that they had, where did their mind go? Where did their emotions go? You know, and, and how did they feel physically? How did they feel about the environment around them and so on so that they can really start to see the effects of their internal um, experiences within that task or goal and, and even the effect of the external environment mm -hmm. on them and how they coordinate, coordinated to bring us to a certain result that we either like or don't. So a lot of this is pre the pregame, you know, so I, I just want to use it's the pregame beforehand, the pre-awareness of what's happening, the reflection and the awareness of what did happen, and then the fine tuning so that we have kind of a new mental map on a way that we can go. Is that right? So is it mostly in the pregame um, or you know, because you talk about visualizations, reflections, is there anything else that you would talk, would you think? Um, and Well, yeah, I would, I would uh, encourage, you know, I, I defined mindfulness as a, as a, as a, you know, as a way in which you can increase the energy of attention. Mm. And, and uh, I'll define it again here really quickly. It's kind of like the, the, the uh, brightness bar on our cell phones where we can move it from really bright and sharp and bring it down a bit if it's too much. But mm -hmm. if we, when we're in that reflection, um, we can use mindfulness to really uh, look at the details more microscopically, uh, more sharply. So don't forget about that because we can be very present in a reflection and, and yet be dull. Mm -hmm. so we, you, you know what I mean? So what we want to do is we want to go into that reflection and boost our mindfulness. And those two things will boost our awareness, which will preset us for the, for the upcoming situation. And then visualization is to put ourselves right in the upcoming situation. So we reflected on the old situation that we want to edit because that's where our mind would go to fetch the details that we want for the new experience. Um, and then we're going to now visualize the new experience uh, with all of that reflection in mind and make our final edits. This is how we want it mm. to be. Um, and then the, the trick is, and again, to use your term pregame, which I like a lot, um, in the pregame, we want to go, we want to, we want to play that pregame over and over again so that we can, you know, I think we started this discussion with how do you talk to your, to your brain? Well, we talk to our brains, uh, one of our brain's favorite language languages is repetition. Mm. So when your brain sees you repeating a certain thing, uh, whether you're thinking about it or not, when, you, when it sees you repeating certain things, mm. it decides for itself, this is the way you want to behave in this situation. Oh. And it creates those coordinates so that you're going to be there every time until you change it. Mm. Unless something pretty strange happens, it forces it out of that pattern but it loves patterns. So it, it learns to recognize patterns. So really, you know, we have to, you know, we have to, in a way, uh, be, be, be careful with, with how many times we repeat something because right. eventually it'll become permanent. And then, right. Yeah. And then what happens, what happens then after it becomes permanent, we forget about it. Right. And Driving think, to school. No big deal. Who cares if it's permanent or not? Well, we yeah, like? you know, you know, look at all look, look at look at individuals that are on the highway that are, you know, flipping people off left and right. right. 
they don't think about that. They don't sit there and say, <laughs> you know what, of all the possibilities I have, I think I'm going to do this or, or, or worse than that, let, let, let go a string of uh, pejoratives, you know, right. and, and, you know, and, and, but, but, you know, they, those things happen. And then afterwards, they usually have the thought like, wow, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <You> know, or, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that, you know, and, and, uh, but they've already done it. And, yeah. and, and they did it so fast. It amazed them how quickly they could get themselves into trouble. And yes. that's because all that stuff is happening under our radar, under our attention network, under the consciousness of our attention network. And it's just our mind thinking that that's what we want to do in a certain situation because we've done it so many times before. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm going to take the example that I gave in the first segment and try to apply it to, because I've actually been thinking a lot about this. So this helps me have a framework of thinking about it yet again. So if I think about what I was pre-aware of is that I have the bias for action. Um, um, that's the positive side. Um, the shadow <laughs> side is overcommit. Okay, yeah. so this is, and we see this happening at work all the time, right? So I have this thing, if I, if I were to reflect um, what specifically happened in the most recent in, incident, I saw a whole bunch of Slack messages. Oh, what should we do about this? I think we should do about this. What about, you know, and it was all, it was this chaos. Lots of information here, there, lots of questions. And I was like, I can't make sense of any of this. So I thought I'm going to put together an Excel spreadsheet that notes the various issues that are being discussed, what things we need to nail down, who thinks what about what issues, and all the people's contact information, and then a set of action items. And then before you, and then someone said, does anyone want to lead this? I'm like, oh, I guess I'm already by default leading and organizing this. And so it was the, it's a behavior of not, it's a, it's, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, chaos is ensuing. I see all these Slack messages with all these comments are all over the place. And then my mind and I, my energy starts going like this. It's kind of like spreading kinetic, just, I don't know what's going on. And so my own behavior is to take control over the situation and create order out of chaos. Um, so I can feel calmer. So this is basically what happened in, in the recent incident when I yet overcommitted again. And so I can see that um, um, I can see where, where this all led me. And if I am mindful um, in, in, in the context of looking at my energy, it kind of went, you know, like, oh my God, you know, what is this? I, I'm out of control. And I can actually see in my childhood had all this stuff is like hard coded at a very early age where, you know, um, as an immigrant child, there was a lot of chaos in my life and, um, you know, parents, you know, and all those kind of things and needing to like get things in control so that my life would be in harmony. So, you know, th this has like a long well, I like how you're doing this. And it's like, mm -hmm, tell me more. was <laughs> <laughs> right this on a pad. But I can see where this is coming from. I'm, I'm mindful and I actually even know the origins of where this comes from, the deep origins that have come from my childhood. And so here's what I'd like to visualize. Like if I were to take an edit, I would say to myself, you see it? It's like, okay, this is chaotic. You don't have to do anything about it. When someone says, who wants to lead this? Wait, wait for a day, wait for two days, mm -hmm. wait until someone else <laughs> raises their hand. Why do you have to do this? You don't have to do anything. So if I were to create a new behavioral response, it would be to like, look at all of the chaos that's happening and my desire to want to fix the chaos and just be mindful that that's happening during the meeting when I'm seeing all the slacks coming in and just like kind of putting and asserting different language, like you don't have to do anything. You know, you're not gonna be of more value or less value if you do to anything. You can just stay here. 
don't do anything. Just sit here. You don't have to control anything. Like if I were to insert that language and just be completely present during the whole thing and not do anything, that would be <clears throat> my goal. <laughs> and what I'd like to visualize happening over and over and over again. Is that the proper use of what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And and really that, you, you know, the way you you went through that is, is, is one of the ways uh, that I encourage going through that in the book, you know, and yeah. because we, we need to go into the experience and go into the former experiences that are being called up to create the new one, so to speak. We have to go into that so that we can understand more about why certain behaviors are being repeated. Um, so we understand the technology of it, you know, that our attention network's going to fetch it. But there's other reasons too, like like you picked out there. Um, and one of the interesting things, like as you were telling your story, yeah. my <laughs> sad know, story of overcommitment. You know, one, one of the interesting things that 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 I found there that 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 I equate with a you know with what a lot of people say really including myself um is that when when those kind of um w when we act thusly like when we say to ourselves well you know i can feel my energy going awry and everything and what we really want is we want we we want to we, we want to balance we want to mm -hmm. balance ourselves because that's where the stress is coming from we mm -hmm. feel the we feel the imbalance so what we do is we do something like what you described and that and that that feels good at the moment because that's mm -hmm. the way we fixed it before. But then later on, we say to ourselves, what did I do? You know, now I, right. I, brought, I brought more stress into my life because maybe I didn't want to do that. Right. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have to do that, but we right. do it. We do it to quell the stress of the moment. And then, you know, a day or two later, it's bringing back another stress. So that's a, that's a good indication and you know we've all we all do this those are good indications that we need to you know we need to go in take a look and how we can do things differently and then make ourselves you know again aware and mindful and attentive as to how we can do that mm -hmm. okay i love it so um we've been talking <laughs> to you i'm just taking work example which your book 12 rules of attention how to avoid screw-ups which I did free a pet space, <laughs> which I'm hoping to get <laughs> do more, do more, which I'm hoping not to do, but at least be more at work. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back. And what I wanted to do is um, next talk about um, um, the way that your brains can affect you. There's all ways in which we are blind um, um, or not able to our brains in some ways are kind of program to um, not allow us to see things. So I wanted to actually talk a little bit about that. Thank you so much.